Greetings from the Bridge of Spies here at St. James's Park in London. Ukrainian Special Forces have played a significant role in their defense of their country against Russian attack. One of the reasons Ukrainian Special Forces have been so effective is Major General Mike Repass, my West Point classmate and friend of over 40 years. Mike was the Commanding General of Special Operations Command Europe, and during that time, he was responsible for the development and training of Special Forces in Ukraine, as well as in other allied countries in Europe. This is his interview. Mike, um, so good to see you. Thank, thanks for, uh, for joining us in this. What can you describe in a public venue like this about the Special Operating Forces of Ukraine? The first thing to know about Ukrainian Special Operations is there's multiple versions of them uh, that existed prior to 2014 and even to today. The first one that's of note is those that found in the Ministry of Defense under the Special Operations Command. Also within the Ministry of Defense, uh, they have a military intelligence director with a Special Operations Capable Force known as the GUR. It's a very capable force. Uh, they do intel-driven operations. Next in the Ministry of Interior is the, the SBU Alpha. Uh, this force is the successor to the KGB. It's a paramilitary force. Imagine the FBI with a very large paramilitary capability. Now, for NATO and the troop contributing nations, we've mainly focused on the Special Operations Command headquarters and its forces. Uh, NATO support has been coordinated among the nations uh, under their national authorities, but we do that via the Multinational Soft Advisory Team, or MSAT, uh, which has really served to coordinate and deconflict activities, as well as synchronizing operations activities and investments along the soft line of operation. Uh, there's a, a number of, of national commitments that have been provided by the nations. Along the soft uh, line, I would say that the heavy commitment is, is from the US, the UK, and the Baltic states, mainly Poland and Lithuania. So there were a lot of activities going on there uh, prior to the outbreak of the conflict on the 24th of February of this year. Uh, I would also say, and Ben, you were directly involved with this, is the multinational uh, uh, effort at the Joint Multinational Training Group Ukraine really brought the conventional forces up to a, a fighting force that needed to be reckoned with, and is doing the, the bulk of the fighting that we see now on the ground in Ukraine. I have trained with probably 60 plus uh, nations. Uh, to include NATO partners. And I would say these are in the top 10% of nations uh, knowledge-wise at the individual level that I've I've worked with. Do you have a sense for the effectiveness of Spetsnaz or or any types of Russian special forces that they've attempted to employ? So SOF is, is most effective when they are employed against operational strategic problem sets and create conundrums for their opponent. I haven't seen where that has happened on the Russian side. I've seen many instances uh, in reporting where they've been policed up on the streets of Kiev, Kharkiv, uh, Mykolaiv, other places where they've tried to penetrate and, and get in there. Uh, but they have not had the operational strategic effect that we normally associate with, uh, with SOF. Uh, just think of SOF in the, uh, in the Afghan uh, early days of you know coming in, uh, the Rangers parachuting into the airfields and securing airheads or the special forces guys linking up with the uh, uh, the regional tribal entities and, and doing uh, operations against the Taliban. The Russians have no equivalent to that whatsoever, none. Mike, I've always assumed that the uh, Russian rear area was not really secure, that even though they were operating in the so-called uh, independent oblast of Luhansk and Donetsk, that not, necessar not necessarily everybody there was real keen to support the Russians or tolerate what was going on. What's your sense about resistance type operations either that are uh, coming up organically or that maybe are being helped and encouraged by Ukrainian forces? I think it's uh, widespread in the Russian uh, occupied areas, uh, less so in the two oblasts that they've occupied since 2014 because the uh, security operations have been fairly sophisticated in uh, long term there to root things out. Um, but early on, the resistance in the Russian rear area in the north uh, around Chernihiv, Sumy, and, and Kharkiv was rather robust. 
and they were they were working the uh, logistics lines of the Russians, particularly the crossing points, bridges, railroad bridges, etc. Uh, they were doing some interdiction there. Recently, President Zelensky has recognized the potential of the resistance, and he's called on them to help approaching uh, Ukrainian forces in a couple of areas. First off, reporting on Russian activities and then interdicting their supply lines and their supplies in the rear area. Uh, so I'm very impressed with the resilience of the Ukrainian people, uh, particularly their leadership and their government. Uh, it's, it's been an inspiration and uh, it's been very instructive to me as an American uh, that we can learn a lot from the Ukrainians. Mike, thanks very much. Thanks, Ben. It's always great to see you, brother. I hope you found that informative. Huge thanks to my friend and classmate, Mike Repass. I look forward to talking to you next time from a location to be determined.